What's going on guys, Kyger here. Today's video, we have water. Yesterday we did a guide on fire. Today we're going to do the exact same thing, talking about the echo itself, how it progresses, what you need, and a breakdown of the fairies and wills. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so starting from the top, so Water Echo starts with max HP and protection rate, which are great things to have, but a very, very big thing, literally the first big jump, which is one of the most important ones, is right here at level 2, so for the third Flower Fairy slot, you get 10% healing effect, and a huge jump actually more than double HP and protection rate which is actually a pretty bonkers jump if you look back at what we had at the time when this came out you could have this and level 1 holy echo and just be pretty bonkers now for a uh, healing support or a tank build this is mandatory it feels like so going over here the next big jump is going to be adding block ignore um, as well as the bonus effect you'll see a little blue circle flying around you and when you when the cooldown is up it has an 18 second cooldown you shoot the blue ball and it does damage based on your HP which is I mean obviously great but for each target hit increases your attack by 5% with a cap of 25 so if you hit 5 things you get that full 25% now at the cap we see about the same about the same about the same you get about 5% more block ignore and just more AoE damage so it doesn't seem like that big of a jump but if you're already this deep you may as well go for it now we're going to talk about the actual fairies themselves talk about their skills how they work with the water echo how they work with each other combos and ideas to go with them and then we'll go into the cores and echoes so starting off here we're going to go in order um, of their generations, what I like to call them. So Gen 1, we have Kandok. It heals based on your attack, which, as a gladiator, it's best because you get your HP as a percent towards your attack. So your heal is going to be better than most. And you're also going to get that bonus healing amount, as we saw right here, goes up to... 20% extra healing on top of its actual heal. The issue is it actually is a pretty small heal. Your base skill heal as well as just a heal from something like Milum, for example, will heal a lot more. As well as uh, it just doesn't do a whole bunch here. It does heal other people so it can be a pocket option. We are in a situation where we do have eight water fairies. So you can have it as a rotation in your back pocket. Uh, this and Lavender can be an easy get out of jail free card. Put them to sleep. Heal the team. Next we have uh, Hydrega. Uh, damage uh, plus stun 
can't attack or use skills for 3 seconds, increases your defense by 35% for 6 seconds. Which is actually a pretty big jump in defense. The stun takes kind of a long time to land. Uh, you're not going to hit this super often. But just kind of making them wary of you and then getting that defense buff uh, could be very nice. Especially if you're doing like a defensive uh, mechanician uh, situation because uh, they also get a buff in their defense from their heal skill. And then it kind of works with the water echo as well, increasing your healing and stuff like that. Then we get into Viola. I'm going to start with her basic attack. She's the only one here that has something with her basic. Uh, attacks does damage, which is par for the course, and inflicts a stack of Flake Ice. Flake Ice takes additional damage by percentage of your attack every 2 seconds. Reduces their movement speed by 5% for 5 seconds. Uh, stacking up to 6 times. The six time drastically reduces speed and removes all stacks. Now, by itself, it can't do it. Now, this is supposed to combo well with the ability. Right here, Falling Star does a big AoE, hits them all with Flake Ice, uh, explains the. Where is it all? Yeah, here it is. Gathers, deals damage. Uh, each hit will be inflected with Flake Ice, and then explains what it does. So it also doesn't state it here, but it also does a knock up after it does the animation. Uh, we're still not in the generations yet that have bonus effects as you get lower. So you don't have to have these three fairies at red, th red 1 to red 3, but you're probably going to have these at rainbow. Uh, just because they are uh, all available in the yellow seed summon, even as a free-to-play. Then we get into Lavender, which is the first one that's not available in the yellow uh, seed banner, but would be the next one up for it. It did get a nerf a couple months back. Let's take a look at it. Does Miasma, deals damage, get, puts them slumber for 8 seconds. They're asleep can't use skills uh, increases the damage you deal to them by 15% and once you deal enough to exceed 50% of your attack then it's um, they're waking up and will receive 60% of your attack as extra damage so this like I said it could be used as a get out jail free card uh, some weaker players definitely use this in Crystal Battlefield and Guild War to kind of lock down an area. I've actually seen uh, a group of three guys that would just be killing, um, m mining a statue and then drop a slumber on someone coming at the after them. Next group comes in, drop a slumber, drop a slumber, and then just have a rotating slumber going. So unless someone else comes after them, you're just perpetually asleep the entire time. Really, really hilarious. Uh, make our way down to here. So uh, Ikoria uh, is going to be the first one. Yeah, that gets bonuses once they get to 5 and 8, as well as has a passive so we're going to do passive, ability, and then talk about the bonuses at 5 and 8. Which 5 is uh, generally red 1 or red 3, and 8 is generally in the rainbow category. So it's feasible to have something in the red 1 to red 3 category. It's going to be kind of hard for most players to get something in the rainbow category. So it's actually nice because... Uh, Generally, the first bump at 5, uh, which is red 1 to red 3, uh, generally buffs the ability in some way, adds an additional part of the effect or functionality to it. And then at 8, uh, could do that as well, but it generally either adds some time to it, uh, just makes it a little bit nastier 
but not really needed. It's obvi it'll obviously be very good, and you would want it if you have it, but the 5 is a great stopping point for this reason. So, uh, when you swap, uh, it's specific, hold on. When switching classes, so, okay. So some of them are very wordy where you have to switch to her or switch out of her. So when you switch regardless and she's there, she does an AoE around you. Uh, very similar to uh, Rimuru, but Rimuru only does it when you swap to her class. Uh, removing the control effects on you and granting... Con uh, uh, immune, control effect immunity, stun, silence, and other effects. This also counts Dahlia. Uh, Dahlia's effect is considered as well, so it will cleanse uh, Dahlia as well as make you immune to Dahlia for four seconds. So you can use it preemptively or right afterwards uh, while hitting the target. The effect can be triggered once every 30 seconds. Then the ability does the melody, uh, gives you Phantom C melody, lasting 9 seconds. Uh, deals damage to enemies around you per second, reduces their movement speed. Uh, if you receive fatal damage during this, it'll consume it, become immune, and uh, turn the damage to enemies and restore 10% lost HP. Massive get out jail free card. Ridiculous water echo fairy if you're doing this. Now as you see right here at level 5 extra 5% HP so you will come back with 15% and grants one second of invincibility uh, and increasing damage per second so that, that part doesn't matter. So also gives you additional one second to do, do, do. So okay, so it's just like a like a split second of immunity so it can give you that 10%. It is now 15% HP and a full one second of invincibility. And then down here at 8 uh damage increased by 10% and increases the regular the regular bump of damage with an extra 10% on top. So this one isn't a must 8. Uh, the 5 is massive though. Then we have Blue Rose, probably my favorite in the water department. Ikoria was my favorite. Blue Rose is probably my actual favorite now. Passive, triggered when... Uh, flower, flower Fairy of current class is Blue Rose. So if this is on your Sword class, it's only active when you're on Sword. Uh, when the target's HP percentage is lower than that of the character, so what you're attacking, uh, they, deal, they deal less damage to you, you deal more damage to them based on who has more HP. Uh, if they have more, they deal less to you. If you have more, you deal more damage to them. A great thing, and it goes all the way up to 5% back and forth. Gorgeous performance. Uh, center of the enemies, dealing damage, and grants Soul of Music. When dealing damage to a target whose HP is higher than 60%, the damage dealt by this skill plus 20%. Uh, then also, so that's separate things. So it gives you solo music. Next line, if they're above 60%, this damage above is plus 20%. And the 60% is important because if you're using this, if you have water and holy worked up, for example, you can then... Uh, once you blast them under 60%, you can then swap to Holy and get the Holy proc and Slaughter proc and probably kill someone right outright. Uh, now, Soul of Music, once it's applied, instantly recovers 10% of lost HP. It's not if you're at 90%, it heals you to 100%. 
it's if you're at 90 percent it heals you uh it heals you one effectively uh do do it heals you one percent uh for every 10 percent of current hp remaining damage plus one percent lasting six seconds so if you are at a hundred percent after this heal you are doing 10 percent bonus damage so this is an offensive water one which mixed with its passive that also gives you the five percent bonus damage is just a massive uh forward thinking water echo and if we look at five and eight here uh, now it's healing you for 20% of lost HP instead of 10%, so more likely to be at a higher percent. And then at 8 down here, it's plus 2% damage for every 10%. So it, go, it jumps from 10% bonus damage at full HP to 20% damage at full HP. Massive, great, great offensive. When I get the question, I want to be a tank and deal damage... Blue Rose and uh, Ikoria are beautiful examples of what you're looking for. And now Gardenia is actually in that same boat, but I think Blue Rose is my favorite. Gardenia, passive. Uh, when swapping classes, effectively gives you the Gladiator buff for 6 seconds. Uh, can be triggered every 10 seconds, so 60% uptime. Um pretty massive uh you know uh, attack percent based on your max hp and you have a lot of max hp from the water echo and everything else you're doing active skill deals damage to everyone within five meters and create a dream of mountain and stream uh for five meters that lasts for eight seconds now water and stream mountain and stream y your healing the caster's healing is reduced by 80%. This is seen as a counter to Dahlia. Dahlia, who turns your healing into damage, well, now you're healing less, so less damage to you, right? Makes sense. Uh, and the master gets 10% additional max HP. Only other max HP ones we've seen so far has been Exoria, who hurts you to give you that max HP, which makes sense for fire. When the enemy leaves the dream, they will be slowed by 50% and dodge will be disabled by for 6 seconds. So very similar to what we're going to talk about tomorrow and holy to mistletoe. Where when you leave mistletoe's circle, you get stunned. Here, it's the same thing, but instead of a stun, it's a slow and no dodge. So very, very similar and as we see down here, at 5, uh, they will be stunned instead of what we said. And slow and disable dodge can't be dispelled. So, stun for 2 seconds. Once they come out of the stun, there will be 4 more seconds of slow and disable. But it cannot be dispelled by any means. And then at 8 down here... Uh, additional max HP attained becomes 15%. It's not plus 15. It's from 10% bonus HP, max HP, to 15% bonus max HP. Now that is all for the actual water fairies. Uh, now we're going to talk about the uh, wills. And then we'll kind of explain how this all comes together. Now the two that I brought two uh, cores and generations each to talk about. Uh, mix and match depending on your situation. God bless right here which uh, gives you a stack while in battle every two seconds lasting six seconds. Each stack gives at level 12 5% block 5% tenacity and 2.5% protection rate. Stacks up to five times. So 25% uh, block, 25% uh, tenacity, 12.5% protection rate. And while you're at max, you also get effectively 20% damage reduction. Massive. 
Now the issue here is it takes a bit to stack up. You have to be in battle. Now Priest is actually the easiest one to make this work with because you throw a bird, throw a tenacity ball, wait a second or two, throw another skill, and keep them at range, play this little dance, or if they come in on you, something like Gladiator or Dragon Knight uh, has great CC, use a dodge to get out, or even this other core that we're going to talk about works really well with it. It's a really nice meld here. Rigidity. Uh, after you take damage three times, gives you a shield equal to 17% of your max HP for 10 seconds and 36% damage reduction for 4 seconds with a 20 second cooldown. So that 17% is on top of, well, sorry, as well as the other bonuses that you're already getting. Uh, so just a massive amount of HP and then a massive amount of shield and this shield as well as your CC and other tools should be enough for you to stack up God bless and now you become an unkillable wall and then once this once God bless is stacked up it is active and then every 20 seconds rigidity and it's it's hard to get through now super strength is the fun one to talk about here giving you a bigger uh, attack increase 25 second cooldown when trigger a core skill as a reminder God bless does not have a trigger you gain a stack every two seconds but it is not considered a trigger rigidity uh, take damage three times that is a trigger and then you will get super strength 5.1% max HP as attack and then you uh, launch a skill, do a butt ton of damage. Then we have God Bless Heal over here. When God Bless stacks to the max, gain 30% healing bonus. This will include HP steal rate and other healing effects. Uh, meanwhile, the life steal, specifically life steal, effect that other players generate through you is reduced by 60%. This is specifically only counting the damage someone hitting you. So if there is specifically a bunch of gladiators uh, on the enemy team, this is a great one to take. Otherwise, super strength is what I would lean towards in PvP. I think that would be your full setup level 12 or as high as you can generally people will have level 4 on a skill so you would bring 2 and then you would have a level 8 god bless and a level 8 rigidity with 4 sets of super strength uh, with something like gladiator priest or dragon knight priest and you're just going to do a bunch now there's a third option here which is still kind of experimental, which is Gladiator, uh, Dragon Knight. All th these three classes are effectively the ones you're looking at here when you're talking about the Water Echo. I generally favor the uh, Gladiator because it's passive, really works with what Water is trying to do. Uh, you get attack based on HP. Then you have super strength right here. Then you have blue rose. Then you have uh, the bonus HP from Gardenia. And you it just keeps stacking on top of itself. And then you blast forward. Uh, especially if you trigger everything at the same time. They hit you three times. Triggers rigidity. Triggers super strength. Then you do your four shot combo with gladiator. Pull in, knock up punitive chop that punitive chop is going to do 30 percent of someone's hp on its own as a tank so as far as what uh ones you should be using on your team gardenia blue rose 
Ikoria and that fourth slot. And that fourth slot is kind of a toss up. I generally like Hydrega because of that stun and defense buff. Uh, hopefully that defense buff la uh, as well as Rigidity gets you over into uh, God Bless going on. And then you can actually have the other three as a totally other team. And once we have the eighth one, as you see, four and four, we currently only have seven in the game. That one right there might be a game changer. And then you have two full water teams to swap between and keep that buff going. Let me know what you guys